Now, you talked about mycotoxins essentially being mold farts. So essentially, the mold off gases, right? And you different kinds of mold, right? It could be penicillium. It could be aspergillus, right? It could be the black mold, stachybotrys, these type of things. And then they produce various mycotoxins. And when we do different tests like plate testing on homes, supposedly each mold or so can produce about 300 different mycotoxins, whether it's okra toxins or alanone. Is that correct? Yeah, which is crazy because we can only test for a very, very small amount on the urine. So really, we're trying to just look for some evidence of this bonfire. We're looking for the ashes. Oh, my God, there must have been a fire here, this big mold exposure. Mm -hmm. We're only looking at the tip of the iceberg. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Our our testing is, is good, but it's still very primitive compared to the amount of mycotoxins that are being produced. Yeah, and the type of organic acid testing that we're doing is on the, on the Great Plains, we'll look at some of the organic acid compounds that correlate with like aspergillus or, or different mold toxins. Is that correct? What are those big mycotox? What are the big uh, organic acids again? Yeah. So Forget. it's all on page Remember? ones. Yeah. So you'll see oxoglutaric. Yeah. You'll see citric acid can be high in a fungal overgrowth too. Mm-hmm. So it's all page one oxoglutaric. You got uh, hydroxybenzoic, which is related to bacteria. I could pull up an O, but in general, it's just page one. It's typically numbers one through 18. If you see any big red flags on that, you either are a combination of a bacterial overgrowth, specifically a clostridia problem, and or candida or fungal colonization. And the lab indicates this. So tartaric acid would also be on there. Carboxy citric acid is also on there. So in parentheses, you'll see under these organic acids now, which is great because this has improved over the years that you and I've been running these labs. It now says aspergillus. So on number six, which is tartaric acid under number six, it'll now say aspergillus. And you know, if that's elevated, you're colonized for aspergillus, which means that you've now been exposed to couple situations could have happened. Either you had a large enough amount of mold, you were exposed to mold long enough, or your immune system was weak enough to where now you've become a mold factory. So you can be a mold reservoir, more specifically a mycotoxin reservoir, where you've just had this exposure at the moldy hotel in Mexico, and then you come back home and you're sick. Or if you were weak enough, now you're growing mold. Even if you move to the desert to avoid mold, you stay sick because you've got that colonization. So with an ocean, it's happening. Yeah, so you can prove that, which is very important because now that would justify the use of herbal antifungals to try to remedy this situation. That makes sense. Let me go pull up one of my old oat tests. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Now, the conventional treatment is typically antifungal medications that are going to knock this out. But as you and I, with our functional practice, we don't like to use that. So, yeah, so number four would be classified as a fungal, the Ferran 2 5 diacarbolic. You've got that. Yep. For ran carbonoglycine. Yeah. So number six. So yeah. So this is old enough where they didn't have the molds, but on the new ones in parentheses, it'll say it, aspergillus. It, it. it is a primarily is it aspergillus for all three of these. Yeah. And then number nine, the tricarbolic is fusarium. Fusarium. Yep. And then arabinose and tartaric are also correlated with yeast, yeast overgrowth. Yeah. So th- this test here, for instance, I did it a Great Plains and a Genova test at the same time. And this one actually came back much higher on the arabinose side. Than the Great Plains, than the um, Genova tested. So it's interesting, you know, different samples and such. But yeah, this one, Arabinose, is strongly correlated with Candida. But then you I have, just ran what? my oat. I've got Candida right now too, so I'm on a protocol right now. I just ran to my oat recently. Yeah, I showed up with yeah. Candida, and 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 I want people to know uh, because uh, you were a speaker on the event. It was called the Candida Summit, which I ran like Correct. five years ago. And, you know, we had like 30 people talking about it and I could look back, but I tell you, I don't think anybody had made the connection here, which was the mold candida connection back then. And now what I'm finding is basically you're just playing whack-a-mole with candida until the mold's gone, meaning you may rotate through various rounds of antifungals, but out the back door, you've got to be using the appropriate binders to pull out the mycotoxins. So if you're just beating candida down and it keeps coming back, it's probably the mold, not the candida that you need to be after. Yeah. And that's where it's good to run a test like this. 